Just wanted to make a quick update to the tutorial that I posted the other day, as Boro Motion very kindly pointed out that there's a much easier way to pull off the effect without needing to use all of those drivers, uh, and it just simplifies the whole shader process here. And so same as the other day, we're just going to use an object, in this case I'm just going to use this chief helmet that I've made here. And same thing, we're just going to go ahead and pull in a single axis arrow here. So first and foremost, let's just go ahead and let's go make this second material right, because we know that we're going to use the bevel modifier, so I'm just going to make a new material, we'll call this wireframe, like so. Let's go into our shading tab. What we'll do, just for the time being, once again just to make it easier, we'll just assign the wireframe to the entire thing, just hide the visor. Cool. So what we're going to do is pretty much the same as yesterday, or the other day, sorry, we're going to get a mapping node, we'll get a texture coordinates node, and we'll plug the object into the vector, same as last time, and we'll get a separate XYZ, and this is important because this will make it consistent across any model, no matter the orientation of it. And then we'll just go ahead and get a color ramp. And we're going to plug the Z output into the factorial this time. Get an emission shader. Plug that in there, that in there. And we can do the same sort of setup from the other day. Just set this to 0.5 and make it black. Cool. So instead of copying all the drivers like I did the other day, what we're going to do instead is just in this object instance here, we can just use the eyedropper. We're just going to use the empty uh, as the object instance, and then you'll notice if we move this, it moves the gradient, we can scale it, and we can rotate it, and it does all of what <laughs> I spent ages trying to figure out, uh, and it does it a much easier way for us. So yeah, after we've done that, you know, we can then just go ahead and set up the customization for it, so you know, we can go ahead and get a mixed color node, uh, set this to multiply, factor of one, and then we can have it be whatever color we want. Uh, and then we can cull out the uh, non-emissive part, so we can get a mix shader. And I think that goes into the bottom socket. We get a transparent shader. Plug that into the top and use the color of the factorial. Then we're just left with this. And then to wrap up the wireframe effect, all we need to do is we'll do it on a separate mesh actually because it's going to make it easier for the compositing uh, side of it. So I'm just going to remove this. So I'm going to have this mesh here which has got my nice shaded view on it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything, duplicate it, and then I'm going to make a new collection. I'll call this one wire. So this is all pretty much the same as what we did the other day. Uh, we'll make a new layer and we'll rename this one to wire just so it's easier to understand. And this one we'll just call main. Cool. And so we'll turn off the wire in the main, and in wire we'll turn off the main collection. And so then here on this wire mesh, what we can do is we can go ahead and add in that wireframe again, add in a new material, push it to the top, make a new material, and we'll just make this one transparent. Let's go ahead and assign this here. Then if we go into our modifiers, I'm just going to get rid of that subdiv that I've already got. We'll get a bevel modifier. Uh, change the limit method to none. In this instance, I know there's going to be some overlap, so I'm just going to go to geometry and turn clamp overlap off, which is going to make a massive mess. So I'm just going to bring this down to something rather small. I think that's pretty good. Um, and we'll just set the shading material index to one. Now if I go look at this, I can see where the wireframe is. I'll need to adjust the emission because it's not bright enough. And then I can just go ahead and control L and I'll just link the materials and control L again and I'll copy the modifiers and now I'll have the same going on for the visor. Uh, and then finally the last thing I want to do is we'll just duplicate this mesh here. So shift D, move, new collection, we'll call this one cull. And just in our filters here we're going to enable the holdout. We're going to make the cull collection a holdout layer. Uh, for the cull object we're just going to get rid of the bevel and we'll get rid of both of the shaders, tab into edit mode, select everything. I'm just going to go Alt S, hold down Shift, and I'm just going to press down on the arrow keys a few times. And then I'll just make a final quick tweak to our shader here, just so that this is a bit brighter. So I'll just bring this up to, say, 24 to make it look a little bit nicer. And then what we can do is if I just go ahead and bring in a camera, Control Alt and Zero to just frame it up. Something just very, very quick. 
And what we need to do is we'll just need to go ahead and also disable the cull in the main scene, or layer, sorry. And then I can just go ahead and render this out. Cool, and so with that rendered, if we just come across to our compositor here, I'm just gonna zoom that out a bit. Um, we've got our main layer, we can just duplicate that. We can set this to our wire, then we can get an alpha over node. Plug this in, plug our wire into the bottom socket. And there we go. Now we've got our wireframe nicely overlaid. And then just for a little bit more effect, you know, we can just add in a glare node uh, and add in some bloom or something like that, just to give it a little bit more, a little bit more flair and variety to it. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's a much, much quicker and easier way of setting up the exact same shader setup that we had the other day.